immediate loss of consciousness. Did you know that approximately 1 to 2 million people in the U.S. are evaluated annually for syncope, accounting for 3 to 5 percent of all ED visits? Let's discuss a typical case. A 65-year-old man with no significant medical history is brought to the ED after a fall at home. He felt well upon waking in the morning, took his medications, and then sat down to watch TV. When he stood up to get breakfast, he felt lightheaded and flushed and fell to the ground. His wife estimates he was unresponsive for about 20 seconds before awakening. This patient experienced a transient loss of consciousness, TLOC, an abrupt, temporary loss of ability to interact with the environment. TLOC can be due to various causes, ranging from benign to life-threatening conditions, and risk stratification during initial evaluation is important. In this video, we will address two common causes of TLOC, syncope and seizure. Syncope is an episode of TLOC caused by global cerebral hypoperfusion. This may be due to cardiac causes, orthostatic hypotension, or viral reflex related causes such as vasovagal syncope. Alternatively, certain types of seizures, which are due to abnormal synchronized electrical activity in the brain, may cause impaired awareness and thus TLOC. When determining the cause of a TLOC, think about the patient's symptoms before, during, and after the event. Lightheadedness, flushing, and tunnel vision before TLOC are typical symptoms of a pre-syncopal prodrome and suggest syncope. Activities such as exercise or exertion that provoke syncope may suggest a cardiogenic cause. Urination or emotionally salient situations might induce vasovagal syncope in susceptible patients. TLOC following a positional change, for instance, sitting to standing, suggests orthostatic hypotension. Finally, a lack of any preceding symptoms can be suggestive of an arrhythmia, another type of cardiogenic syncope, or a seizure. Seizures may be preceded by abnormal smells, tastes, sounds, or even the feeling of deja vu, which are referred to as auras. The patient may be amnestic to this period, so ancillary history from witnesses can provide useful information. While the presence of abnormal movements or unusual posturing may signify a seizure, some patients with syncope will have some involuntary coarse jerking movements of their limbs during the TLOC called convulsive syncope. Movements that precede the TLOC are more specific for seizure. Tongue biting or urinary or fecal incontinence are suggestive of seizure, but can occasionally be seen during syncope. Other differentiating features are summarized in this table, but none are pathognomonic for a specific etiology. Following a seizure, patients often experience a post-ictal state, characterized by residual confusion, drowsiness, or focal weakness after the event. By contrast, patients with syncope typically regain normal mental status and neurologic function within seconds or minutes after their event. Focal neurologic deficits raise suspicion for seizure. On the other hand, an irregular heart rate, rhythm, or murmur may suggest cardiogenic syncope. Finally, positive orthostatic vital signs are a strong indication of orthostatic hypotension. Ultimately, further workup is guided by the most likely etiology. However, most patients with TLOC should undergo ancillary tests, including EKG, blood glucose level, and a head CT if there is any indication of head trauma or focal neurologic deficits. In cases with no apparent cause, testing should be tailored based on suspected etiologies. Using what we've learned, let's reason through our patient's presentation. He described lightheadedness before losing consciousness. There were no abnormal movements, tongue biting, or incontinence during the event, and he immediately regained normal mental status. This makes syncope more likely than seizure. Since the event occurred soon after changing position from sitting to standing, orthostatic hypotension seems most likely. This was confirmed by vital signs of change from 121 over 85 while sitting to 95 over 70 while standing, with an appropriate heart rate response. His EKG showed sinus tachycardia and the glucose level was normal. 
Orthostatic hypotension can be caused by hypovolemia, medication like diuretics and antihypertensives, or certain underlying disorders of the neurologic, cardiovascular, or endocrine systems. Our patient's history and exam findings were suggestive of dehydration, so he received fluids in the ED and was discharged with a plan to follow up with his PCP. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com.